Good morning, everyone. We begin our celebration by signing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. By saying together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it, and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race, since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions. But when he, who from my mother's womb had set me apart, and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me, so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem, to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went into Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any other of the apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. As to what I am writing to you, behold, before God, I am not lying. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only kept hearing that the one who once was persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth, Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered the village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel has always been, or many times, interpreted as a comparison between active and contemplative life, but that would not be an issue at the time that the gospel is produced. So we have to look for something else. What I was thinking is that it, it almost sounds like a parable, and we have read so many this year, right? Because Matthew's gospel have many, and on Sundays we have read many. 
it sounds like a parable, and it's an interesting one. It sounds like a parable because it can be applied to our lives in different ways. And, and you remember two Sundays ago that we read that parable about the workers in the vineyard? And that we said that sometimes we feel, and I told you that I've worked in a vineyard, so if the owner of the vineyard makes me work the whole day to pay me the same as everyone else, I would be upset. So in this parable, in this gospel that feels like a parable, I, I would feel the same way. I'm the type of person that if you come to my house, I will be doing all the serving. I will be working. And if somebody else is with me hosting you, and that person decides to stay at the table just talking to the guests, I may get upset. Right? But that's wrong. That's not what the, what the parable is trying to say. What the parable is trying to say is that look at the two characters and see how, how Martha chooses to do one thing and Mary, God, Jesus says, chose. So they, they are making choices. And I think one of the things the parable is saying, the gospel is saying, is that you have to own your choices. So Martha chose to do this, act this way, be the one serving, then embrace it. Because otherwise what happens is that whatever she's doing, she's doing it bitterly. She, goes to, she judges her sister, she goes to Jesus, she criticizes her, she's, she's upset, and Jesus obviously tells her, you are worried and anxious about many things. So we have to review our lives and see if we are really worried and anxious. And if whatever we do, and whatever we do in faith, we do it bitterly, then it's time to review what we do. Jesus didn't call us to bitterness. Jesus didn't call us to, to anxiety. Jesus is calling us to, to something else. The other reason why I say this is like a parable is that we can apply it to our lives very easily. They speak about sheer intelligence. You know, you do a test and you have an IQ. Did you, do you know that? Then they speak about emotional intelligence, which is the way a person is able to relate to another, the capacity to show empathy or to enter into dialogue. They call this emotional intelligence. And I want to create a new type of intelligence that is situational intelligence to be able to read a situation and act accordingly. Here, Mary is able to read the situation and do what is right to do, whereas Martha seems to be struggling with understanding that situation. There is a time to serve and there is a time to listen. There is a time to be joyful and a time to be sad. There is a sign of maturity to be able to identify a changing situation and be able to act accordingly. Of course, this is a modern interpretation of the text, but I believe is one that can be useful to us. We have to be able, so the narcissist, the person that is all about him or herself, never adapts. They say, I'm always the same way. I've never changed my opinions. I'm always acting the same way. That person is immature because what we need to do is to be able to adapt to every situation and, and react and do what is needed each time. A person that is the opposite of a narcissist, a, a selfless person, will be able to understand the situation and act accordingly. I pray for that, that we will be able to, whatever we do, not do it bitterly, and that we will be able to read situations, to be mature emotionally and intellectually, but also to read and understand situations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We stand and we present our praise and petitions to the Lord in the confidence that he intercedes for us before God. For our church, that through an honest desire to follow Jesus, we may grow, learn, and serve his disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nation will seek to address the needs of their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those in our church with their own personal struggles, that they find comfort through prayer and their faith community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed, that God will give them courage and hope, sustain them as they wait, and help them find new opportunities for work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will ease their suffering, return them to health, and that they may experience God's abiding presence with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Joseph Kaplan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the petitions on our prayer tree, in thanksgiving for what we have received, and for Carol Burns Moreno, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask you that you listen to these, our prayers, the ones we said, and also those we kept in our hearts, asking you that you bring them to fulfillment on your time and always according to your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through these sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, <clears throat> by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ending, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be filled. For those praying with us at home, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.